In a previous video, we took a look at the tune on this drone and gave you some tips and tricks for getting set up and getting a proper tune and, and a proper, an original look at a big quadcopter, a 13 inch quadcopter like this one. And what you need to do to be cautious about when you're doing your first flight, and then kind of some of the moves you need to make and, and kind of look at that tune. I made a lot of recommendations and advice at the end of that video for what the gentleman with this quadcopter should do. In this video, we're gonna go back. He made those adjustments and we're gonna take a look at what that looks like now after the, the recommendations were applied. And then some additional steps like, okay, now that we have the tune kind of a little better sorted, how, what are some other things we can see? Like what are the next steps once you get the balances squared away? So without giving too much away, let's get into it. Okay, for a little recap, if you recall, this was the previous PID gain settings on his quadcopter and he has INAV on this. So we had a, P is around the 30 uh, and a 40 here for y'all. Uh, I terms were basically double that for all intent and purpose. And then D is around, I would say the upper 20s, 30, you can see here as well. And I went ahead and made through looking at his log recommendations to set, just to set these at 30, to change the P on the y'all to 80 and to then have whatever he had for the I terms there. So bring those down and then move your the D gains up here just a little bit. Uh, we saw a little bit of overshooting. Now I should probably stop here and say, if you stumbled across this video first, you should probably pause this, go back and watch that video, which I'll link down below in the video description, and then come back to this because they're complementary of each other. So looking at the difference in what we had, so this is what we had for response. Again, the green line here is what the uh, sticks are commanding and then the red or the cyan line here are what the quadcopter, or I would say maybe that's more of a purple, is what the quadcopter is actually doing. You can see we had some overshooting and oscillation here, a lot of oscillation and overshooting here, and that was all mostly related to the I term. The I terms were too high in relation to the P's and was uh, having some wind up and, and I bouncing. Uh, you can see we've solved that here. We have a, just a, the slightest bit. I mean, we are talking ever very so slight uh, and much more uh, refined uh, response uh, to stick inputs here with those new gains. Again, these are the new gains here with the 30s and it's really mostly because of dropping these I gains. That was the biggest offender as we covered in that last video, but we did want to bounce up the, the D gains just a little bit, just a touch more, just to uh, address some overshooting there as well that we saw some, some rapid overshooting. Have a little bit of rapid overshooting here. Nah, this is kind of a mix of the both, but uh, I, you know, this is, you're not going to see or notice. It's, it's very, very slight and subtle. So now that we got the gains pretty much sorted with the balance between the PI and D, uh, what else can we look at? And then looking here on the pitch axis, we essentially have the same thing. Uh, looking pretty good. A lot of delay though, a lot of delay between the input and then the actual movement. So if we do a marked point here and then slide out to generally that same location, we're looking like 40 to 50 milliseconds of input delay just you know before the quad you know he makes the stick input and then you before the quad actually gets rolling and moving we're going to see that input delay and we're going to push a pin in that and we're going to talk about that here in a second and then looking at the y'all same thing made some adjustments here now we move the uh, y'all p and i to 80 on both and you can see did some stepped y'all inputs here pretty good a little less delay you can see here on the yaw axis compared to the other, a little bit more on, on the ascending uh, input move here, but uh, not too bad on the yaw. Uh, again, a little bit less delay on the yaw, so that, that was probably a good move there as well. Again, we're gonna talk about this little delay and see what we can do there. So getting into that delay, what are the things that we can look at next? Well, we want to then move ourselves to look at the motor command. So we wanna go back to some of these sharp inputs and I don't have those motor commands up here. I'm gonna pull, switch my to trace template five of the UAV text trace templates, which if you don't have those, those are on my website, theuavatech.com, and I will put a link down below where you can download those and then go ahead and open those and get these same exact views here. So follow along if you're doing your quadcopter. And uh, we're gonna go to this spot here. And what we're gonna look for is uh, anything where we're doing some sharp inputs here, specifically on the pitch access. 
and we have a bunch of delay and we want to look down at our motor commands and see how high or how hard those are driving. So I'm going to go ahead and browse this down a little bit and you can see we're getting up to like 50% motor command. So the motors just aren't ramping the, the, the quad, the flight controller is not really calling the motors to fully ramp to deal with this input delay. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a piece of it. So it's not really pushing, pushing back very hard. We're getting up to like 65% here on these two. So again, the flight controller is just not pushing as hard as it could. Uh, it's kind of, we're giving that this input from the sticks uh, and the, the, the PID controller is just kind of pushing the quad to adjust uh, its rotational rate based on that, but it's not pushing it very hard. So then you get that, that, that delay that we're seeing there. So what can we do about that? Well, if you're using Betaflight, you can just, once you have the balanced gains, you can just move the master slider up. It's really good somebody uh, suggested adding sliders to Betaflight so that availability is in there. And um, so it, it's super simple with Betaflight. In other firmwares like iNav, uh, they don't really have sliders. iNav has um, some uh, easy tune sliders, but they're not, they don't have a master slider, so it doesn't really get you all the way there. But luckily you can go to my website, theuvtech.com, make this link down below. And what you can end up doing is you can put your PID gains here in this top uh, uh, current PIDs uh, entry form here. So you can see I've got the 30, 30, 40, 35, and everything's right there. Uh, I should put in the 60 here. I was dabbling with a little bit of stuff. And then once you have them entered, you can go ahead and grab this master slider and move this up and down. And all this does is it really just multiplies all the gains by this value to get the new gain values, but it doesn't in proportion to each other, right? It, it just multiplies each thing to it. You could do it with a calculator. You could do it in your head if you're really good at math. Uh, and it just gives you a little tool so you can come in here, put them in, move that slider up or down. Uh, you can even do this on your phone out in the field, right? You just go to the same website on your phone, type the stuff in on your phone and then move the little slider up with your little finger on the phone and then get your new gains and put them into the, uh, into the OSD uh, PID entry, you know, locations and things like that. So you can see uh, what we can do is move these gains up. So long story short, the big thing that we want to be able to do with this is the reason that the motor commands aren't going up to 100% is because the, the kick controller is not pushing hard enough. To make the PID controller push harder, we just move all the gains up together. And that's what we want to do. So that would be my next recommendation for this quadcopter is to move all the gains to these values over here, this 45, 45, 53, 45, 60, and 60. And then for the yaw access, um, well, there's a couple things. Uh, the other thing I would do in here, looking at the PIDs, is I would start to implement some feed forward. So feed forward is also going to give us a, a push and a boost uh, to go the right direction. But I like to not over rely on feed forward. You really want your main controller to do uh, the good amount of pushing that you need. Uh, so it is somewhat of a balance, but I would take these feed forward gains and bring these up to like 125 or 150. So I would double, you know, double these or, or even more. The other thing I would probably look at doing is um, moving the yaw. You can see there was a little delay there. So again, same thing. It's either going to be using the moving the yaw P or the feed forward value up. Maybe set this at like 120 and set this at maybe 90, just a little bit higher here as well. And uh, like I said, move these up to like 125 or 150, uh, depending how snappy you want that to be. But that will get that PID controller to, once you make these snap inputs, to, to spike these. Now, if you do get a spot or you're looking at your quadcopter, and you see this delay up here, especially for big quadcopters, it's quite common. And then you see the motor spike and it flatlines out at 100%. Well, that is not a PID controller problem now. That is just your uh, equipment's not powerful enough to, to push the quadcopter hard enough. So at the end of the day, the quadcopter has a lot of moment of inertia. The big props have a lot of moment of inertia in themselves uh, to get them spinning up faster and slower. They're 13 inch props. They have a, like, put them in your hand, twist them, 
a 13 inch versus like a five inch. They have a lot more moment of inertia. The whole quad has a lot more moment of inertia. So there's a bunch of things you can do. You can get lighter props, you can get bigger motors, or you can try to take the mass of the quad and try to get it closest to the center point or the center of gravity of the quadcopter, center point of rotation of the quadcopter. It's not so much about the overall weight of the quadcopter, it's just getting everything compressed down to the, the center of mass or the center of moment of inertia, uh, and that will enable it to spin faster. It'll make, it's almost like making those motors more powerful. So the more that weight is distributed out, just like when you're on a merry-go-round, you're in close to the center, your friends can spin it real fast, really easy. You go out to the outside, the thing slows down, it's sluggish, it's very hard to get it to spin if your friends are pushing you. Same concept, that moment of inertia is everything. So we really talk about weight of quadcopter for tuning, but it really doesn't have anything to do with the overall weight. It has to do with the moment of inertia. A lot of times that's tied to weight because the heavier the thing is, it's, that weight is typically distributed out. On large quads, again, bigger motors, they're heavy. Uh, big props, they're heavy, and they're way, way out at the ends. So it's tricky. Uh, to find that good balance. Uh, but yeah, so those are some things you can do mechanically to, to shrink it up and just look for it here in your black box and don't chase the rabbit. If your motors are spiking up to hit 100% here and you have this big delay, then you gotta do some of those things I just talked about. If they are not spiking up all the way and you have a big delay, well then move all your gains up and or uh, add more feed forward if you're not, I would say within the hundreds, uh, maybe even the 200 round for, uh, realm for feed forward to, uh, to get a harder response and, and delete, uh, reduce that delay. Now, the other thing I would typically look at at this point is kind of come back and reevaluate our filters. So I'm going to come up to trace template zero on this, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the raw gyro trace to take a look at that. And you can see this quad, very little, uh, raw vibrations and raw motor noise. Uh, so it's doing really well. In this scenario with iNav, uh, since it doesn't have the different spectrum tools like Betaflight Black Box Explorer, I would then uh, invoke the PID toolbox and then bring that in. So in here, I have the log brought in, go into the spectrum analyzer, and then we can notice a bunch of things in here. So we can see here at zero to 100% throttle, and we can clearly see our motor band. It's slight, but it's there. And we can see that, hey, that motor band's starting around, eh, it's above 60 hertz for sure. Starting probably around above 20% throttle if you project this down to here a little bit, but it's very slight. So I would say you're, if you're really looking at the core motor band, you're starting at like 80 hertz, because this is 100-ish here. The scaling's a little tough on this thing. But, um, and I have to see if I can, I'm not clicking here, or clicking and see if I can, I guess I can zoom in. Yeah, I can zoom in there a little bit. Yeah, 60. So this is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the scaling's still a little rough. But nevertheless, uh, you can look at that in general and to get a general sense of where the raw vibrations are starting. You can see we're doing a really good job here on gyro filtering. Uh, this is the raw D-term. So look how clean this is and look how much the D-term amplifies all that noise. So it's super clean here. You can't see anything. And then here it amplifies it. And then here we're, we're filtering it back down with the uh, degain filter. So looking at what he has here, he has a filter set up of a static low pass on the, the gyro at 50 Hertz. This is 80 to 250. That's probably pretty good. 80 to 250 here. Uh, 50 Hertz, this could be a little higher. This could probably go up to 60, 70. Uh, this coming all the way down to 30 Hertz is probably a little lower than it needs to be. This could probably go up to like a 30 or 50 Hertz, even 60 Hertz number here. So this dynamic notch doesn't get so low. Uh, the Q factor, I would leave that the same here. I would just ignore the unicorn filter. Uh, it's kind of complicated um, and Typically, honestly, for me, I typically just grab this and set this all all the way, slide this all the way over to 2000. So it's just not even a factor. It's not doing anything. Uh, for here, same thing with the D-term filter. This could probably go up to like 60 Hertz. Uh, so you can make some slight tweaks and adjustments to it. The other thing I might look at on this quad is instead of doing the 3D filter option here, I might set this to 2D. So instead of having 
three dynamic notches on each axis. It would just have one dynamic notch on each axis and not um, just not double, triple up so much. That will reduce a bunch of delay there as well. And last but not least here, just taking a look at the step response of the two different PID tunes uh, in PID Toolbox. You can see the difference uh, here. And in that other video, we're really talking mostly about the I-term bounce back. We were saying it was really close on the PD balance. Maybe just a touch more D was needed. Uh, and even here, it looked like just maybe a, just a little bit touch more D on each axis. So maybe this could go up to like a 38 and a, and a uh, well, this one would have been like 43 or something. Uh, maybe even five points more on the D. Since it is a big quad copter, you probably want a nice subtle uh, uh, return to stick. You don't want any bounce back, anything at all. So you might just want to bump these up like a 40 for the Ds and a 45 here. And then we already talked about this down here. But you can see on the original uh, tune here and the original PIDs, how we had that long lumbering bounce back. That's that's whenever you see that, that's eye gain, right? That's definitely eye gain bounce back. You can see it here as well. Boom, big eye gain, big bounce back here. And then you down here, we sharpened up uh, this response by increasing this uh, 38 P gain uh, on the yaw. We sharpened this up by make, moving that up to 80. Uh, we could sharpen that up some more as well, but you do get into, uh, typically y'all will look like this because it's not really a thrust access that uh, it can produce, you know, it's really based on moment of inertia and drag on the prop. So you don't really get a really snappy response on y'all. Okay, well, that's it. Hopefully that was helpful for uh, that initial video on how to get started and what some things to look for. And then after that follow-up flight, some further things to kind of reduce the delay now, once you get the balance, kind of tightened in, uh, maybe some little tweaks there, come back, revisit those filters, maybe we're a little over conservative, which is good at the start to be over conservative, and then uh, maybe loosen up those filters. One big thing, last thing on the filters is don't chase the rabbit too much on big quads with the filters. Just get them set generally like in this scenario like I had here and I wouldn't mess with them anymore. Um, the amount of delay that you get with just the moment of inertia things that we talked about, props and the whole weight, everything's much heavier on big quads, that the filter delay is, it's just a small fraction uh, that you're dealing with there, a couple milliseconds, you know, 10, 15, when you're dealing with delays of 40, uh, 30 milliseconds, so it, 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 it's diminishing returns. You start to really perfect the irrelevant on a big quad when you're over-focusing on filters. So yeah, get them set, like we said, like it showed there, and uh, then you should be in good shape. There's some PID tune adjustments. Um, again, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down below. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.